Hey kiddos, Coach Troy here. Now I got 90 minutes to get out of this lab and escape room in a box. Flashback. Now flashback here, it's a sequel to the werewolf experiment escape room. Uh, my same people. All right, this story is more centered on the history of that whole situation. It's narrated uh, by the notes that you're going to find of this Dr. Lisa David, who's a, a childhood friend of uh, the werewolf antagonist, a Dr. Na. Now you find yourself trapped in the doctor's uh, laboratory, and so you got 90 minutes to escape and figure out how to reverse the werewolfication as it's been uh, termed, uh, before Na returns, and you were, of course, then eaten. Now, one thing that they really did well with this game is there's three different paths that you're going to take to find your escape. Um, one is based on the written word, the other is science, and the third is uh, based on the childhood friendship between Dr. Lisa David and Dr. Na. Now, don't get too excited. Those, It's not as deep as it sounds, all right? That's just kind of... Just a light label for the three different paths, and the puzzles are kind of based around that theme-wise. Um, but I do think it's great that they have that because then, you know, if you've got more than one person, like three people at a time, you got three paths, you work in it that way and you alternate. Or if you got more people than that, you just break up into smaller groups. Um, and that plays a lot better than, you know, some games when there's just that one path that you take and you kind of feel like you're getting each other's way or watching over someone's shoulder as they do it. And, it's a little awkward. So this uh, does a great job of being playable in with larger groups of people. Uh, being said, it doesn't really, you know, as you're going through, it doesn't really feel like you're finding your escape so much as you are unfolding, unraveling the story, the background story of um, of those two characters. And so I, it doesn't really hit that escape feel, but it does. You know, it does tell a nice story. So you're figuring that out. You're more little bits and pieces of the story as you go through. So I guess in that way, uh, the flashback name is fitting. Kind of. Now, I can't show you too much without giving you spoilers. So just kind of trust me, I guess. All right. Now, the biggest boon to what this uh, escape room has is the amount of physical items that you're going to get to play with. All right. Now, this game holds similar items to its predecessor, so if you played that, you're going to have a good idea of, of what you got. All right, the, the most noticeable of these items is going to be uh, these boxes with these plastic locks here, okay? So you're going to get actual physical locks uh, that you're going to be able to find out the combinations and ways to open, which is, say, very cool, very cool. Um, they're a little hard to read, but maybe that's just me. Uh, outside of that, of course, you're going to get lots of different components, like... Uh, little pieces that you're going to put together to solve puzzles or to build items, uh, cool things like that. And of course, lots and lots and lots of paper notes. Now this game was a little bit on the easier side. Um, between the three of us who have played similar games a few times, it only took us 45 of the 90, uh, the, the 90 minute time limit. So yeah, I'm going to guess that the target audience is a little bit younger uh, a lot of the puzzles felt more like activities than actual puzzles. I didn't feel like I was problem solving too much. Uh, so it's just a matter of, you know, putting in the work to, to getting it done and going through. All right. Um, and you, yeah, you have three paths, but those three paths are pretty linear. You're not backtracking a whole lot. There are parts where you do at the end where you backtrack to your, f but there's not just not a whole lot of that. So, um, and there's definitely a lot to keep you on track. Tons of hints throughout the game. Uh, that's not saying it didn't have its fair share of surprises. There were some good surprises in there. You know, you got to have that in that kind of in this kind of game. Uh, and we did, but you know, we only got stuck a couple times. And even on the trickier puzzles, there's there's plenty of guidance to get you through. And there's even a hint book and an answer book. So you know, you're not going to lose this game. You're gonna get through. You're not gonna. You know, it's not gonna beat you. You're gonna figure out your way through. Now, if you like the werewolf experiment, uh, you're going to like its sequel. I actually like this game a lot better than its predecessor. Right? It felt more like a finished product to me. It just felt like it, w it was better done and better produced. Um, 
And what this uh, particular game is going to have over other at-home escape rooms that you're going to find is, is in the it has the edge in that physical component. All right, it's quite, uh, the, the amount of uh, different puzzle pieces you're going to have, putting things together, playing with them. All right, and and nothing beats just the 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 sound of that click. It's just so satisfying when you click open a lock. All right, you can't get that without you know unless you have that physical product. You got that, and yeah, this nothing beats it. All right, best part of any escape room. Uh, <laughs> now, the story in this one, you know, I say it's a little more childish. A lot of escape rooms usually kind of have like maybe a dark or sinister tone. And despite the fact that you're always getting threatened to be eaten in this game, uh, it never really hits that. All right? it, it still just feels kind of like a like a kid's story. Right? Uh, and it's, it's also one of the easier escape rooms I played. Like I said, it, it took us 45 minutes of the 90 proposed. And... Um, I say you're not going to find any crazy challenging puzzles as well. Um, it's just more like um, like you're working on a puzzle book. A lot of these things, and, and that's that's more of like some arts and crafts and puzzle books. So you're not going to do the crazy mental gymnastics that you do on some of them. And but that's not necessarily a bad thing because it's going to keep everybody involved and in working. Right? And so you say if you got a larger group of people, like this is a good escape room for that. <laughs> I don't know. Just first off, I do gotta say, felt a little betrayed by this game, right? Doesn't this cover scream like early '80s Tron theme, something like that? Yeah, that never really, that really came out. I opened it up, and then I realized it was a sequel. So yeah, I felt a little betrayed. Anyway, outside of that, uh, <laughs> I didn't really get the escape room feel to this game. You know, I just never really felt stuck. That might be due to the, you know, just to kind of how easy the puzzles were. It felt more like working on, like, uh, the puzzle section of a Highlights magazine. I may have just aged myself there, but some of you guys are going to know what I'm talking about. Outside of that, though, you know, there, there are plenty of surprises, though. There are surprises, and there's some unique puzzles that I haven't seen before. So, so that was nice. I did like that. And the story, yeah, the story's a little cheesy, a little childish, but, you know, we did find ourselves laughing at uh, different parts of it. And you say, we definitely had a good time. We were entertained. We had fun while playing. So you know, that's the most important thing. All right, so uh, I will say, more hardcore escape room enthusiasts maybe pass this one up. But if you got younger people, you got larger groups, you want to work as a family together, this is a fantastic escape room for that. That's the perfect situation for it. So if you got, you know, if that's what you're looking at, give this one a shot, all right? This is Coach Troy here, and I'll see you all next time.